Now, welcome to the Algebra 2 SOL review. Um, I'm going to teach you some good test taking strategies here that you can use anywhere, actually, not just on the SOL. So, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on today if the problem says equivalent, you can always check your answers, or if you get in a bind and they have answer choices here for you, we can check to make sure you're doing it correctly. Um, so, I'm going to Go straight to, well, eventually. We're going to go to Desmos. In Desmos, when, when it says equivalent, we're going to change all X's and Y's to A's and B's. And I'll get to why that's why we're doing it in a little bit. Well, might as well just tell you as I'm filling them in. A's and B's, or X's and Y's, are, if you have Desmos do that, it'll graph it. We don't want Desmos to graph this. We're going to use them as sliders. We're going to use A and B. We're going to make those numbers. We're just going to substitute in. I'll choose A to be 2 and B to be 3. Uh, as long as it works in Desmos, it doesn't get us undefined, we can use those numbers. Otherwise, if it gets undefined, change the numbers. They always got to be different because A and B are different variables, different letters, so they so we got to have different numbers for them. So let's go to Desmos and see what we get. what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm going to type in the square root of 20. So I'm going to have the actual answer first. So a to the 16th. And I'll have b to the 25th. I'm going to hit the all button, and then I'm going to have a equal 2 and b equals 3. So I got the crazy number, I'll write it down, 1.05 times 10 to the 9th, big number. If we type in all the answer choices, one of them should equal, or maybe even another one. Let's, there might be more than one. In that case, we would just choose the smallest of the what's left underneath the square root. Um, I know you guys all can do this by hand. But if you get into a situation where you don't remember, you panic, this is a little bit easier to remember sometimes. All right, so that is not an answer. So let's look at B. 5A to the 4th. B the fifth so it does take a bit got to make sure we got them in there right otherwise definitely gonna be wrong and two oh, that's not it oh, biscuits two a raised to the eighth B raised to the twelfth square root 5b. Oh, there we go. There's one of them. Let's make sure d isn't, because 2 is smaller than 5, so there's a chance. So I'm just going to type them all in to make sure. Y. Oh, i got to make sure that x is a. My goodness. Apologize for this. x to the so A to the 8th, B to the 12th, square root of 2B, and that is not exactly the same. So it's going to be C. So any of these problems that you see equivalent, you can work these out. So I'd be careful with equivalent when it comes to imaginaries. Imaginaries, you're just going to work that out just like we used to. Um, like the first parentheses aren't needed, so we can drop those because there's no multiplication on the outside, no s exponents, no exponents up here. Um, the subtraction here, that is going to get distributed in. That's why we need the parentheses. So once we distribute that in, we don't need the parentheses anymore. Then we have like terms. 
So negative 6 plus 5i, no, negative 6 minus 11 is a negative of 17. We have negative 1i plus 5i is 4i minus 13i is a negative, negative 9i, right? So 4 minus 13 is negative 9. So negative 17 minus 9i. There we go. So you can look through these problems. I'm going to stop at number four and kind of really talk about this. When it does say equivalent, you do have to be careful. You have to look at which division is the biggest. If you look, the middle one is just a little bit bigger. Let's go to the let's go to Desmos and see what we do with this. So it does take a little bit of patience on this one. So we have you're going to make a division sign. And then another division, you can see the the fraction getting line getting bigger. I click on the bottom and I hit division again. Now the biggest division is in the middle. That's extremely important for this problem. I'm gonna change, well actually you don't even have to change it. I'm just gonna have W, I'm gonna leave a W. 11 minus W, 30 minus W, or 30 W squared. W minus 11. Five W to the six. And I'm just gonna choose W to be three. You can't choose W to be like 11, you'll see it says undefined. That means one of the denominators is equal to zero because 11 minus 11. So choose a different number. You can choose any number you want, negative 13.5. When we choose and put in our answer choices, one of them will come up negative 13.5 now. So I'm gonna go through painstakingly, go through and type in each one so we can see. Oh man, race to the fourth. The wrong buttons here. I by six. Oh, A is. I thought I'd have to type in more. W to the third. So if you use X's and Y's, it'll start graphing. It'll start on the coordinate plane. We don't want that. We just want to see what's the equivalent. You can see A is the right answer here. So let's take a look. So A is the correct answer. Uh, complete factorization, if you're factoring here, you can do that by hand, but you could also check it because they're equivalent. These are one of the answer choices equivalent to the original, so you could do the same thing. Um, here we got equivalent, but you do have to be careful. That's i to a power. So you really should be thinking how many i squared can you divide out of 75, and that's 37. That's 74. We need one more. i squared is negative 1 to the 37th. Negative 1 to the 37th is negative 1 times i is negative i. So that's really, even though it says equivalent, i is a number, so we can't replace that with a variable. Uh, number 7 gets people confused. It's if you put 67 in for b, or 61 in for b, will that be factorable? Or you put 23 in for b, is it fa can you factor that? Or we put... negative 7 in, or I bet you guessed it, put negative 16 in, plus negative or just subtracting. Which one is factorable? And I'll leave you with that. Uh, number 8, you can see that's equivalent, perfect. So that one we can substitute in, just change the x's to w. And number 9, you say it's the same thing, equivalent, equivalent. Alright, number 11. So now it's solution. So for this one, if you ever see an equation, equal sign, put the left side of the equal sign into the first y, put the right side of the equation into the second y. And we are looking for the intersection. 
and it's the X value. So let's put them into Desmos. Give me a second, I'm gonna pull this up on my iPad so I can see what I'm looking at. So here we are actually using the, the coordinate plane. So we are going to use X's and Y's. So there's no equivalent here, we're just looking for solutions. You're gonna get some crazy looking graphs. That's all right. So that's the right, left side of the equal sign. Now the right side, y equals 2x plus 9 over 5x. We gotta figure out where do they intersect. Looks like right here. 1.9, did I put these in right? Looks like it. Are you seeing anything that I did wrong? I don't see anything I did wrong. All right, so we're looking for the X value. Kind of looks weird. 1.929, one 1.929, 1.929. That's obviously not one of those answer choices. So what we're going to do is we're going to put each fraction in and see which one's closest. 27 over 14. Oh, look at that. That one's right there. Yep. The eight, the third decimal place, the uh, thousandths place, the eight would round up to a nine because of the ten thousandths place, the five would round the eight to a nine. So that is our answer choice. Cool. So it is A. So anytime you have an equation, put the left side into y equals and put the right into another y equals and find the intersection. Um, you do have to be careful. You got to read a little bit. This is how many, not what are the actual values of x. How many values of x will satisfy the equation? So this one, you got to isolate the absolute value to get it by itself. And then you're supposed to break it into two problems at this point, a positive zero and a negative zero. So a positive and negative, because absolute value has a positive and negative answer. But zero doesn't make sense with positive and negative. That makes no sense at all. So there really can't be a positive and negative. They're the same one. So there only can be one solution for this problem. So that'd be one. All right, number 13. Uh, it's been a while since we talked about absolute values, but you can just put this in the Desmos and graph. If you don't remember left four, down one, and it's less than, so it's shade below. If you don't remember that, just put it in Desmos. I just want to show you so then you can have this at your fingertips for the SOL. So it is Y is less than. You don't even know that. need to know that it's less than. Absolute value is right above the ABC. X, you don't need to know that it's a less than because you just compare it to what's on the screen. Minus one. Now compare the vertex is at negative four, negative one. So I'm looking at negative four, negative one. That's going to be B or A, and then it's shaded below. So it's got to be B. So B is the answer. All right, let's take a look. So here's what is the solution. So this is another look, and look at this equal sign. I know it's weird, definitely a little different than before, but Y equals y equals. Put it in. I'll do it quick. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask in class. I definitely want you to work it out both ways. Work it out the way we did it in class this year, and then also work it out this way. And then y equals 8. I know where they intersect. Negative 1, 8. So it's the x value. So it's going to be negative 1. So negative 1. Done. Let's see if there's any other problems I'm looking at going over. If you see anything, oh, here, number 20. We have a solution set for the systems of equations. We're going to type 
First equation in the line one, second equation in line two. You're going to do the exact same thing we just did. So let me pull it up on. And you're just looking for the intersection. So y equals 4x plus 2. So anytime you see that equals, just put it in. And let's see where these intersections are. There's one here, and we've got to be careful because there's another one up here. So there's two of them, negative 2, negative 6, and 522. And there we go. It's going to be D. All right, I think that is all I was planning on going over. If you see any questions, I know there's questions like number 24. We have not gone over that this year or number 25. Uh, 26 we did. We actually had a problem like that. Um, varies jointly. We did not get to that this year. Um, I don't think we didn't get to 32. 33, we'll probably do that quickly in class as a group. 37 is very similar. We didn't do that. 38, it sounds like we're doing, there's a lot, but a lot of these we can go through pretty quickly to get to the answers. I think that's all that we haven't done. It sounds like a lot, but those are pretty quick ones to explain. So come to class with any questions.